In this video we'll be covering a lot of ground. You'll get to see some of the front garden, not to mention the back garden, where Steve will show you what we finally did right to get our wasabi growing. And we'll even make a quick visit to the western coast of Spain where we'll show you a new wild food we found. Along the way we will also talk about what to do when the water just runs out of your pots or straight off your soil. So sit back and enjoy your travels. And one more thing, our apologies, as we did have some issues with sound quality in this video. I'm working in the front garden today, which is predominantly Australian plants, so it's our main habitat garden. There's the odd thing, I've got a rather nice hellebore behind me, and there are some veggies over in the corner. And we get a lot of birds, we get a lot of butterflies and other insects in here. I'm just going to show you a few of the Australian native plants we've got here. The one in the screen at the moment is a Coria, which is mainly a winter flowering shrub and it has these gorgeous little bell flowers on them that you can see here. Really popular with the birds. Next we have Veronica perfoliata and this is a really nice shrub. It has racemes of beautiful blue purple flowers in summer. It's really a standout plant and very easy to grow. Um, the ones you're seeing here we've actually all grown from cuttings from some plants we already had which we'd purchased from a nursery. Just coming into flower now is our bulbine lily. We have a lot of these around the garden. They do tend to self-seed which is no hardship because they're such a beautiful flower. They're really one of the early spring flowers, so an absolute herald of spring in this part of the Australian uh, landscape. One of the reasons I know I need to get some water out here is the uh, Dianellas, the flax lilies. They're looking very dried out, not very good. You can see the spent flower heads. They actually have beautiful bright blue flowers, again more of a summer through to autumn flower. So I'll go and turn the sprinkler on, I've got it all ready to go. And we'll put the sprinkler on for 10 minutes and I'll go and get organised and do some other weeding. I'm just um, setting up to do some preparation for the summer garden. Uh, a big issue around here is hydrophobia where the soil uh, builds up a waxy coating on it and it just means that instead of the water penetrating the soil and the plants getting the benefit it tends to run through or run off. A lot of people will reach for the soil wetter. Um, I prefer not to. The easiest way to deal with it, um, if you have the water, is to just put your garden sprinkler on for several times a day for just 10 minutes. Now I've been doing that uh, on my broad beans, which is where I'm going to be weeding shortly. And then I've done that for the past couple of days. And then this morning I gave it a big long soak and the water's penetrated really nicely. If your pot plants suffer from hydrophobia, I suggest you submerge them in a tub of water, holding them down with a rock if necessary, and leave them there until all the bubbles stop coming out of the pot. Steve? I'm just um, burying some of the wasabi runners to see if I can strike some new plants just layering them here in a little bit of dirt, potting soil. Oh that sounds good. Are you going to um, pin them down? Uh, well I've pinned these ones down but I don't know that I'm going to pin these ones. They'll no. probably be alright there. Since Steve was um, working on the wasabi, I thought I'd actually pop down and just give you a closer look. This is wasabi, well known as a Japanese horseradish, wasabi a japonica, and it's a real pain to try and grow. Whilst we have cool temperatures, which suits it, uh, we also have really hot summers here, and it doesn't like that. We have killed more than one wasabi plant in this garden and this one is just going gangbusters and we think it's all to do with the position. So in the past we've had it in partial sun in other parts of our garden but at the moment 
it's tucked into a tiny corner next, next to where our garden hose comes from and it's also got the advantage of being protected by the brick walls of the house so despite the fact that people say it doesn't like temperatures below 10 degrees centigrade it's certainly had a lot colder temperatures uh, while we're away this winter and it's just thriving Steve was talking earlier about pinning it down so what he's done is he's taken a whole lot of these um, tendrils which are coming out from it and he's actually used these um, just thin wire to hold them down and what we're hoping will happen is that where the leaf nodes are so just looking at this one which isn't buried where he's buried those under the ground and hold them down with pins and we're hoping that new plants will shoot from that now whether that happens or not is another matter but uh, we're going to give it a try this year the rest of it the plant is also edible and it's got these beautiful leaves and I have actually cut a few of those leaves to um, eat thrown them in salads at this stage we don't want to overdo harvesting the leaves because we really want all of that goodness from the plant to uh, get back into the hopefully new plants that might come up while in the seaside town of Murcia on the west coast of Spain earlier this year we found some small plants growing in the crevices on the rocks next to the ocean. I did some plant identification and discovered that this small plant is edible. It goes by the common name of rock samphire or sea fennel. Uh, its scientific name is Crithium maritinum. I took a nibble and there certainly was a taste of aniseed. Back in Australia, I was thrilled to discover that I could actually buy the same plants from an Australian herb company, which I'll link, put a link to in the notes below. The plants are growing so well when I got them that I decided to pot them on straight away. Now I've tasted these Australian bought plants and they're not as aniseedy as their Spanish cousins. I'll let them grow a bit bigger and see if they develop some more flavour. I'm hoping that'll happen. Thanks for joining us again, and if you enjoyed this episode, please consider giving us a thumbs up. Thank you. Bye for now.